As an IT professional, I get this question all the time. The question would be, how can I make my computer run faster? And this typically happens when you own a computer for a few years and then suddenly starts running slow. And there, there are a few reasons for why this happens. So we're just going to go ahead and go through each one of them and I will quickly explain what's causing it, why the reason for that is, and what we can do about it, right? So let's go ahead and have a look at the reason number one, not enough RAM, right? So without going into too much detail, you guys already know what the RAM is, but in case you're wondering, you can think of um, this weird analogy that I have for RAM. Think of a, a bus that has so many seats and it can only carry so many people, right? In our case, data. This is what RAM is for. When we run out of space on that bus, that's when we run out of RAM. So let's have a look at how much RAM we have right now and what it's doing. So if you go down here into your taskbar, um, you can go ahead and right click and, uh, I'm sorry, your toolbar. If you feel, just hover over your toolbar here and just right click anywhere, you can select your task manager. And what, we'll, what this will do will actually show you how much of your RAM is actually being processed, how much is being used, I should say, and how much it's free and what else it needs to do once it runs out of RAM. Now, if you're in Windows 10, this is how it'll look initially. If in the first time you open up a task manager, this is how it's going to look like. It's going to be very simple because they don't want people to find out about things. Okay, I'm just kidding. That may not be the case. But if you click here, more details, you can expand them and you'll get a lot more. But what we want to look at for now is a performance tab. If you click on performance tab and select memory, you will see how much RAM you have installed in your computer, how much it's free and how much is being, how much is cached and how much is available, obviously. So in our case, out of total of 3.8 gigabytes, as you can see here, that's our total. Out of 3.8 gigabytes of physical RAM that we have available for processing, 2.1 of that is being used and free or available, if you will, it's 1.7 gigabytes, right? But the thing is though, once we run out of this RAM, right now we're, in, we're good, right now we're good. We're using a little bit more than half. Once we run out of that, we will start using our page file, which is located on our hard drive. And our hard drives tend to be slow, especially older hard drives. They have disks inside of them. They're not like solid state drives where it's a lot faster. They will start to spin and they would take forever to use that uh, virtual memory, which is created here. By the way, 5.2 gigabytes is virtual memory that's allocated for this computer. So once I run out of 3.8 here, once this goes down to zero, 1.7, I will start using this. And for that to happen, my computer and CPU and hard drive has to start working super hard. And that's how you will know that you need to upgrade your RAM, right? That's one reason. So this will be zero and this would be maxed out at 3.8, right? See how it actually went down to 1.6, something else kicked off and is, is obviously using it, right? And once we run it up, we will be starting to use our virtual RAM, which slows things down, right? So now that's how we know if we have enough RAM. So let me just go ahead and close this. So the second reason is, um, a background service is taking up our processing. There are a couple of reasons for this, but let me go ahead and show you um, one main reason that I've seen that will actually do this, right? That takes up a lot of resources and start to use your hard drive and your CPU intensively. Let's go back to our task manager and let me show you here. The first thing you'll see is processes. And this is actually a perfect example. Um, we have, right now I am using a screen recorder that is using 30% of my CPU, right? So I'm still good. So that means I can still open up different things, but I have 30% of CPU currently being used and RAM and how much of a read and write. Uh, but the, typically what I've seen is a uh, antivirus software, like in my case, Immunet Protect. Sometimes this will spike up to 99% or even, you know, uh, I, you would never see a single process to go out of 100. It would just say 100% here. But if you click on that, you will see what else is using up that processing power. So if you see your CPU pegging at 99%, look at the services that are running. Chances are that your um, antivirus is running in the background. And if that's happening, that means it's doing a scan and that's perfectly normal. That's perfectly normal. And then we just need to let it finish right? Or you can stop it if you want to. But this is what's happening. In my case, um, for the for this case of example, OBS is just a screen recording and it's using up 30%. But, you know, that's that's the basically the gist of it, of what could be causing uh, your slowness as a background service, right? So let me just minimize this because we're going to use this again. A second reason is, uh, I should say a third reason, is you have a virus. So similar, uh, one way to find out that you have a virus that's running in the background, probably using your computer as 
I don't know, as, as a zombie, you guys probably have seen that, or, or any type of, uh, it would basically kind of hide itself as a background service. That's what would happen. So we could go back to our services, right? Let's say sticky notes here is a virus. A lot of times viruses will hide themselves as a name of a system uh, process that will be running in the background. So sometimes you would have sticky notes for some reason taking up 99% of your CPU. That's a virus. If you have anything that looks, uh, a lot of times actually a virus will disguise itself as something that looks vague and you know typical that you would see, but like something like here service host, you know, it would it would name itself that looks something like this. Let's it would say service host and it's taken up 99% of your CPU, right, of your processing, and now your computer is running slow because you have a virus, and that's a perfect way of to tell you know how to tell if you have a virus, right. And then you can kill it, and then a lot of times it would just come back up. That's why we need to let that previously talked about uh, antivirus software finish what it's doing, you know, so that way you can, you know, resolve this issue. Okay, let's minimize this coup and go back to the uh, a fourth thing. Fourth thing is you simply have a local profile that is bloated. So let's have a look at our prof local profile. What is local profile? It's a, basically your login name and your giant folder of things that you have on your computer. So let's have a look at mine. If you go local local C, right? If you go to C, uh, local, uh, ah, excuse me. If you go to C drive and then go to users um, and then look at your profile. This is my local profile called Cobaman. This is the name that I use to log into this computer. I can see how much of it is in size basically so if you hover over it as you can see it's only 279 megabytes because it's a fairly new it's a fairly new uh, profile you know but sometimes they can be so large that and and have corrupted cache data in the background that could cause some of these issues and sometimes the best thing to do is actually to basically redo or delete this profile and create a new one so how can we do this now be very careful if you ever try to do this because I don't want you to lose any documented data because if you go inside of your local profile um, you will have all your documents right you will have all your documents your favorites all kinds of different things everything that's on your desktop everything so be careful if you decide to um, delete this because you have a corrupted profile that's causing you issues causing you slowdowns this you will lose all of your documents right so the reason uh, it's just kind of re to reiterate, um, the reason your local profile could be causing issues if it's bloated and it's old and it has old cache data and it's just running slow, right? So you want to get rid of it, nuke it. Okay, so let's see how to do that. If you go to your system properties, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on this here, or you can just type in system properties down here and look it up for yourself. But if you go to system properties, um, you can go to your um, advanced set system settings. And this is the proper way of deleting your local profile. If you, um, in your main um, advanced tab here, so the advanced will be the middle tab. If you if you kind of look down in the middle here, it says user profiles, desktop settings related to your sign in, right? So if you, if you go and click here, if you click on settings, you will see all the different local profiles that are installed on your computer. Here's my uh, Koboman local profile, right? And that's the size of it. And you can see the one that's used by my mom um, it's a lot quite larger, right? So this is what you would probably see. And here, over here, you can see where uh, last time it was used, right? This is the date. Last time it was modified, you typically when the last time it was used. So if I want to delete Kobuman or my mom, right? I would just select that and select delete, right? At this point, I can't do it because I'm already logged in, so this won't let me do it. But typically, you would do this with your brand new profile. You create your own new user account, right? So if okay, see it says here to create a new user account, you can just simply go to user accounts, or you can just search for it. Create a new one, all right? Create a new one, and then you log in with your new one. Go back to here, and then then your button to delete will be available. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing that could be causing your issues. I'm just going to close this. Next thing, it could be your computer needs updates right so if you haven't updated your computer for a long time microsoft microsoft is notorious for taking up a lot of resources in order to update your computer so you would run it you suddenly open you know you start you run your computer you turn it on you haven't used it for a month and then suddenly it's running so slow you can't do anything and then what's happening is that updates are running in the background right 
Uh, one way you can check that is obviously through a task manager. If you go to the task manager, you can see that the update service is running here. And you can see that it would be taking up a lot of processing, just similarly, to, similarly here to the OBS. So if that's the case, obviously let your computer um, you know, let your computer, um, you know, finish what it's doing. But I, sometimes I like to go here and just kind of uh, click the update button, let it finish everything, and then, you know, once it's done, it may take a long time. Your computer will be running slow. There is really no way around it. And then once you restart once or twice, you'll be done with that. And then hopefully, once you log back in, it will be all done and, and over with, and your computer will be running fast again. So that's another big reason that your computer would be running slow especially if you don't have enough RAM and uh, you know this and that their processing power and the last thing I have listed here is just hard drive going bad a lot of times uh, your hard drive would be just simply going bad like I said if you have an old computer and it's a regular type of hard drive and you know it might have corrupted issues maybe just physical issues with the hard drive itself it could just be running really bad and then one way to actually check that is to um, you know run a scan on your uh, on your hard drive right so the way you do that is a lot of times I mean this type of thing varies from computer to computer in my case this is just a, a cheap gateway laptop right I would have to basically restart my computer go here and then reboot my computer see it can tell here I just kind of wanted to kind of go back to this updates see I have an update that hasn't finished but I need to update and restart but if you restart here um, you will see you will get to the point at your post where you can select you know, system diagnostic you can and then after that after once you go to the system diagnostic um, for your model it's going to be different for everybody I, I really wouldn't be able to tell you exactly which one it is you would go in and you know run your diagnostic for your hard drive you can do a full full system full hardware system diagnostic and that's one way to see if your hard drive is going bad even your RAM even your RAM even your RAM could be bad right so this is what we have to do um, a lot of uh, I know older HP computers uh, Hew Hewlett Packard computers you could download a CD that you would that would have a diagnostic um, system on it you would reboot your computer and it would load up to your to that CD with a diagnostic software and then you would just you know complete it and you would see if those are type of issues you know uh, there might be a couple of other issues that I've just forgot to mention I apologize for that but this is these are the most typical reasons why your computer would be running, running slow, right? I'm not going to bore you anymore with this type of stuff, uh, but you kind of, uh, at least I will get you on the right track. And, uh, you know, best of luck to you guys. All right, have a good one. Bye-bye.